Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey with more Justice for All. Last time we began the big top investigations into the ringmaster. I forget his actual title. Not ringleader. <laughs> but the owner of the circus has been killed. And everybody seems to think it's the magician man. But we are going to prove them wrong. Which is not the magician man. Because we are the main character and he hired us. I don't th <laughs> That would be an amusing thing if one day there was a Phoenix Wright case where, surprise, your defendant is actually guilty and you know they're guilty, but your professional, like, obligation as an attorney is you, you attorney-client privilege, you can't say anything that would incriminate them. That would be amusing. But no, we are going to go, and we are going to see what the clown has to say. I have been forewarned, and I, th and I think two different streams leading up to this, that the clown's testimony is kind of wonky. So I'll need to be on my toes for this. I need to think it through. But eh, we've been through wonky stuff before. So let's get on in it and bring out the clowns. December 29th, 1154. So sweetie, you have to believe me, I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene. So then, where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the ringmaster's room. And while and while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Because there is, like, the cape and the hat there, like, in this flashback, so I wonder if that's going to ever tie into it. Exactly. He told me to wait in the room because he would be right back for ten minutes. He said ten minutes specifically. That's when the ringmaster headed to the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie! I just remembered! I went straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means... It means that the ringmaster could have chosen his costume, but well, could have taken his costume, and went out looking like Max. But he is kind of shorter. And he, and he had a false mustache, right? That was on his table, so... Yeah, if he was just, like, dressed in a coat with the roses and the hat, aside from, like, height difference, you wouldn't really be able to tell with the big collar. Fabulous! That's a fabulously possible possibility! <laughs> well done, Nick. Perfect time to make it to stream. Ah, thank you for joining in this early. Right now, we're just nailing in some little facts before we have to face the clown. I'm just wondering why, because the one thing I just noticed is the ringmaster has, has to have a false mustache, right? So I wonder if that's going to fall into place here sometime. However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm. If you think about it, all they found at the crime scene was my silk hat. Where is your coat, actually? What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, hmm. Wow, Max, I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up. Magician or president? You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. There's a specific part that'll make you cry. I wonder if frustration at having to face the clown, or if it'll actually be a touching moment. I can't wait to find out! It'll be grand. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will now call my next witness. A pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. One stupid thing, minor backseat. If you want to make a point related to Max's three symbols, what you do is present uh, the Max Galactica poster. Yeah, that is quite indirect. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that in mind. Granted, I'll, I'll have to judge that when it comes up because I have no idea when it'll have to be presented. 
I'll just have to see through the context clues what people say. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Why did she just call him a pitiful clown? Because he is pitiful. The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. <laughs> it was Clown Dolphy, a born and raised! <laughs> okay. Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why he is speaking autobiographical gibberish? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. I've never been in a courtroom in my life. Why are you still dressed like a clown? I can at least understand Ben. He's dressed like a normal person. He just carries a, um, an emotional abuse puppet. Uh. <laughs> this testimony was the one where I gamed over. Oh, boy. I wasn't quite sure what joke was best suited to this sort of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. So it is easy to see your occupation. Please state your name for the court. Ah, that's actually a burn. Oh yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Man, do I have to wear pants? The sign always says no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> you know, you'd think that you'd be seeking revenge against Max a bit more, but you're just really damned determined to tell jokes, ain't you? Okay, okay, how about this? Have you met my proctologist, Dr. Seymour Butts? <laughs> how was that one? <laughs> <laughs> but a couple of clowns who up to no good stuff. <laughs> Just... <sighs> the f Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reference for some reason. <laughs> Your name. Lawrence Curls, professional funny man also known as Mo the Clown. You... Lawrence. Mo Curls. So he really is the Three Stooges all in one. The, you witnessed the scene around 10.15 p.m. the day of the murder, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Very well, Mr. Curls. Will you please testify to what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a Rastafarian walked into this plaza without the humor, please. Okay. Ah, uh, poor Mo can't be his normal Stoogey self in court. I was going to say this isn't the place for jokes, but this is the Ace Attorney universe where we have cases that can only last three days. I know, I know, I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for ten years. No matter what I say, all I get in return is a vacant stare and a polite pro applause. Since no one ever laughs at my jokes, I've taken to laughing at them myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. You have said nothing about the murder, and we are like th three or four stages into your testimony. Oh, boy! Imagine my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even tried to come up with jokes just for today. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. I decided to try and make everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone, what do you think of me? How am I doing? <laughs> do I even have to cross-examine this? <laughs> that would be hilarious if there was an entire testimony I didn't even have to cross-examine. Um, aren't we the ones supposed to be asking the questions here? Witness. Huh? We will listen to your call for help <laughs> after the court proceedings are over. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just that's just a, a, a line that makes me laugh. <laughs> Thus, please stick to the facts of this case. Really? You really hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be a straight man later. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait. Poor gum. <laughs> okay, that's good. The correct answer is to hold still for ten minutes straight. <laughs> Any press or present get you a big penalty. That would be kind of mean. Oh, great. That's... <laughs> that. Uh, would that be how Kojima would make an Ace Attorney game? <laughs> I feel like he would do that. Now that that's settled, shall we begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can. We'll talk for as long as you want. Okay, good. <laughs> that's actually funny. Just stall wall until he finally catches on. 
The night of the murder, after practice was over, I went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. With what, is my question. That's very inciting. If this eyewitness account is to be believed, I have enough to pass judgment right now. I guess. Oh, you're gonna love this part. I don't think I am. I don't think I'm going to like it. Oh boy, is this the hell? Of course you can. There's no way this account can be criticized. He is a literal crown. A literal, cl a literal clown. However, the witness is a bit, how do you say, off kilter? Um, almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. <laughs> uh, that must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defense's cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, you've got to find some kind of contradiction in his testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright. Your Honor? I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber rattling. I understand, Your Honor. If you cause this clown to stay from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one of the corny jokes. Are you saying... Are you saying that if I lead the clown to jokes... And he uh, goes off like a clown landmine that they will actually penalize me because th that text was a blue game. Da, 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 da. Okay, I will be very careful, I guess. Ah. All right then. The night of the murder after practice is over, I went break straight to my room. I'm gonna save. We'll first read them bit by bit and see which ones I should press on. And obviously if we do press on any, we will do them in like chronological order because sometimes the game likes to give you new information or stuff that might be good. The night of the murder, after practice was over, I went straight back to my room. I think that might be a nice thing to, like, uh, get more information on if he was alone, if that, like, lines up with Ben's testimony. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I don't think... Well, hmm. Depending on how the first one goes, maybe press on that one, because Ben said that he had to basically drag Mo to his bedroom because he was so tired. I thought he'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I'd glance out the window. I would s assume we'd want to press on that so that we can be like, what caused you to glance out the window? It must have been stormy that night, so why would you do that? That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. So, at most, I would say, maybe press this. Because we'd be like, hmm, how do you know? But then, then he also says, this one, so maybe not that, maybe don't press on that other one, because they're, they're kind of redundant in a way. Ringmaster, he was of Max, who was wearing his cloak. We could say, well, how do you know it was Max? Maybe, but at the same time, we, we can't control what Phoenix is going to say. I kept watching them all, and all of a sudden, Max clunked the Ringmaster over the head. I would feel like this is an important one. Maybe if we have more information. But, like, what did he clonk him over the head with? So, yeah. Okay. I would say begin with this one. Let's try and be careful. You'd say that practice wrapped up around 10 p.m., correct? See, that's the thing. Huh? How exactly am I supposed to make a joke about 10 p.m.? Now, 8 o'clock, that's something a clown can riff off of. Let's pretend it was 8 o'clock. That way I can make a joke. No. Let's not make it 8 p.m., all right, Mo? What do you mean, let's not? Don't take the clown out of the clowning around. 
I thought you cared about the ringmaster and he's dead. Wouldn't you want to give an accurate uh, precipitation of knowledge so that we can smack Max? Mm -hmm. You're giving us more thought than I did. Well, yeah, I have paranoia on my side. <laughs> Multiple people say, hey, be afraid, and you outright told me. Uh, uh, just for fear of missing out, the joke is, all right? <laughs> I'll let you type it out. I mean, I guess I could just save spam and just, like, go through everything. But at the same time, I want to take this seriously and not cheese my way. I will sometimes reload save if I feel like the game is being mean with the information presented. But at the same time, that could just mean be me being a dumbass. That's entirely possible. Hmm. But yeah, clowning around. This is, again, you'd think that you'd want to... Get justice. Come on, Nick, just listen to his joke. There are three reasons why I don't want to. One, I probably won't laugh. Two, I'll get hit with a penalty. Three, I'll get whipped. <laughs> Will the witness just proceed with his factual testimony? You're so boring. <laughs> and nope, I do not trust this one. This one feels like we got nothing out of that, that first one. But... <laughs> All right, uh, just for FOMO, the joke is, a man goes to his doctor and asks, how is number one? Every day at six. How is number two? Every day at seven. So what's the problem? I get up at eight. I don't get the joke. <laughs> because it's a number thing, you have to... I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't get the joke. But yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, the doctor asked, but still. It's a Mo joke, so I probably wouldn't have gotten it anyway. But yeah, no idea how tired I was. I don't trust that one. And let's see. I think this one is... I think this one is pertinent to... Wait, yeah. Yeah, nope. I don't trust that one. He's way too happy with it. If I go straight to sleep, but let's see. You just happen to glance out of the window. You could say that. You could also say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeped, eyeballed. Mr. Cows. Oh, I guess cinnamons aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him further on this issue. Should I press him? The, the judge thinks that he's like a time bomb that's about to go off. Do, 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 do. Eh. Ah. Let's cause him to explode, I guess. Why not? I mean, the judge kind of jumped in and made him stop, so maybe in his melancholy, he will be honest. Exactly why did you look out of the window that night? Why? Why? Clubs don't need a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday... Once I tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. I completely forgot about that. It sounded like a giant thump. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out of his window upon hearing a loud noise. He did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? Oh, oh, yo! That's not something you just forget to mention. Um, yeah, what she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. We should start turning the tables in our favor. I heard a huge noise outside the window, and that's what made me look, take a look outside. I guess I'll quickly save, because I feel like this is something I should also press on, but at the same time, who knows? What was the sound like? Well, I guess it kind of sounded like, I guess you could say. Mr. Curls, may the court remind you that humor is unnecessary. Oh, how'd you make that? I was going to make a joke. <laughs> I guess the sound sounded like, uh, I suppose it sounded like someone getting hit with something very hard. Yep, that's what it sounded like, honestly. Someone getting hit, huh? What then? You went to look out the window and you saw? That's when I saw two silhouettes. You were a bit far away, though. Hmm.
I'm uncertain because they threatened me. But at the same time, I have safe states on my side. <laughs> I'll just try to avoid ones that obviously don't seem pertinent. Far away, you say? You had to say exactly how far away were they. Let me think about that for a second. If my room is here, and I, they looked about yay big, I'd say they're about 30 feet from my window. Alright, that's actually good information. Just 30 feet? That's not far at all. Blizzard, there was w snow stuff outside. It was snowing that night, and it cut out down on visibility. My C, please continue with your testimony regarding the two shadows you saw. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I feel like this one should also be important. You'd, hey, uh, you'd say you clearly saw this, even though you were, by your own admission, far away. That's right. I've been thinking about it over and over since that night. But things didn't really make sense until I spoke with the prosecutor, Ms. Von Karma. But now I'm 100% certain that it was Max and the Rigmaster that I saw that night. But it wasn't until you, like, we talked to you, like, far earlier. Like, after, like, Gumshoe recently dealt with you. And you said that it was Max. Just think about it. How could I be wrong if Max is always wearing his uppity symbols? Uppity symbols? Lawyers nowadays, do you even have to go to school anymore to be one? All right, everyone wants to do. All together now, sing with Uncle Mo. You don't have the puppet's charisma. See what I mean? It's always like this. The crowd never wants to go along with me. I must really be utterly and completely worthless as a clown. Yowza! In that foolishness, get back on track. Will the witness please testify to what he saw and only what he saw? I kept watching, and all of a sudden, Max clunked the ringmaster over the head. Is he one of those degrees, uh, useless types? Probably. Mike, this will be the last one, so let's press. You say you saw the ringmaster get clunked over the head? Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random non sequitur. What would you say the victim was struck with? You mean the weapon? I have no idea. A weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? That's not what I meant. You did say you see every... You did say you did see everything, didn't you? Well, I, um, yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't see a weapon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you're actually kind of contrary. He wished Phoenix went to school for longer. <laughs> I don't know why, but that, that amuses me. Mo! Did you or did you not see the crime of the murder committed that night? I will not permit you to harass my witness in this manner. You'd better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. Because if you don't... Uh, you know, waiting for... Oh, that's a hefty penalty. Uh, isn't this a bit melodramatic? So what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to believe the witness did not see the crime? Yeah, he just said that he heard the sound of somebody getting hit over the head, and then said that he saw... But how would I prove that? Unless the game, like, goes that way, or would I have to be present a thing? <laughs> a nice penalty because the prosecutor said so. Well, it's the karma land. Hmm. Do I have anything... Because on the one hand, we do have that that shows no footprints. Hmm. Oh, we can actually check this out. I forgot. Hmm. That is a big hat. <laughs> because Justice Brawl said so. That's also true. The game decides you must be punished. In the name of difficulty, we will punish you. Well, I pressed on everything else, so I'm going to assume that a I have to have the ability to prove that something is wrong here, so let's see what goes. I've got a great reason to make my claim. 
And I suppose you'll be telling us all that great reason? Of course I will. The reason is... The witness's very own testimony! Okay, good. Because I did want to bring up 30 feet away, it was snowing. And not to mention, also, again, said heard sound. What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? Mo said that he heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Hmm, he did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden Max clunked the ringmaster over the head! If Mo is to be believed when he says he looked out the window upon hearing a sound, there's no way that he could have seen Max clunk anyone! In 1972, a crack upon... <laughs> What is even... He has to say that really fast. Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. Wright's assessment? They didn't commit. These clowns promptly escaped from the maximum security clown car. Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C-team theme to... <laughs> the A-team? <laughs> because it's a clown team, but with the A-team? To anger this court? No, no, no. I'm just falling for time while I jog my memory. Great job, Nick. These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Well, um... Uh, you're back from your jog. Well, it pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much. When I looked out my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps of my statement. Von... Von Karma! Tampering with witnesses again. So now you are saying that you did not see the defendant clonk the ringmaster. Yes. When I looked out my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Checked out? Yep, he was on permanent vacation, as they say. <laughs> Again, I thought you liked this guy. Why are you mocking his death? Mr. Curls! Your Honor? You did not witness the actual crime, however. You still say you saw the criminal, correct? <laughs> yes, exactly. The ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well, then please testify. To the silhouette you saw, I expect the truth. And if I even catch a hint of a joke from you, I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? Got it. Wow, I think that's the most we've seen him get, like, angry at a witness. It's an addiction, probably, like using humor as an escape from real emotions. Except he wasn't this hell-bent on, like, inserting jokes. Because, again, it just feels like w when he talked about the ringmaster, he was much more solemn and respectful. So it just seems odd that he's making jokes about the ringmaster's death. Like, sure, maybe, like, if he joked about it more earlier, I would maybe think it. Hmm. Well, let's see. It was a bit far away, but that shadow could only have belonged to Max. There's no doubting it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk hat, that black cloak, they were all there. His face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt that it was him. His cloak is fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. Well, that's not much. Hmm, it does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of a crime. It took the clown long enough to get his facts straight. But whatever, this should finally be good enough, yes? It is decisive testimony. Was Max really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. We have to believe in that. All right, Mr. Wright. Commence your cross-examination. I wonder if I'm still at risk of uh, setting off the the clown bomb. Hmm, fair point. I don't remember all of the details either. That was just the impression I got after my first play. That's fair. Hmm. It was a bit far away, but the shadow could have only belonged to Max. Maybe I could press. Uh, why can you see Maya's right eye to her hair in that one sprite? It's an old, like, anime trope because they want to give characters hair, but they also don't want to like, completely hide their facial expressions, so sometimes anime will just be like, yeah, you can see, like, their eyebrows and eyes through the hair. Artistic decision. Hmm. That shadow could only belong to Max. I don't think that pressing on that one would be pertinent, because we also have this. There's no doubt about it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk hat, that black cloak, they were all there. Well, let's keep reading and I'll get to my thought after that. 
His face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt that it was him. His cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. His uppity symbols. But only his silk hat and the cloak. What about the roses? The roses were always important, weren't they? Hmm. Ooh, I had an idea. This was my introduction to anime. In a way, it's not like IRL hair is no pig fuck. Yeah, it's just with anime, they're like, hey, let's do a thing that makes it so that we can still have cool hair, but also let people see expressions. As always, we save because paranoia. Let's press on this. You're sure that it was what you saw last night? Exactly what I said I saw, exactly what I saw! I've got eyes like a hawk. Um, don't birds have terrible night vision? But that's not all I saw! His face was saluted, but there's no doubt it's him. Let's press. You were able to see that you, that kind of detail from your window? There was a light near the cream, scene of the crime. Anyone of decent eyesight should be able to see that much. Out of curiosity, Mo, what is your eyesight like? I can see like a hawk out of my left eye and an eagle out of my right eye. I reckon say his eyesight is perfect, 20-20. That must mean he could have seen the crime scene clearly. Hmm, the more we look into this matter, the more suspicious it becomes. Hey, you asked me what my eyesight was like, not what it actually was. I guess. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Because there's something about this, but let's press on this just to feel it out. Trilo said the same thing. But if it was just the symbols, then even I could have been wearing them. What if someone had just taken Max's symbols and worn them? I thought of that myself, but just looking at the shape of the face, I knew it must have been Max. Hmm, you're sure of that? Such a silly little boy. He threw his entire case headlong into a trap. Because of what Chet said earlier, Max's three famous symbols. But this guy only brought up Two of them. Man, I saved, so let's go for it, bang! Objection. You say you saw all of Max's uppity symbols. So yeah, if I didn't have those hints, I would never have gotten that, I don't think. I probably would have resorted to brute forcing it. Because, while, because it's mainly because of the... Ah, bah, bah. It's just weird. That is a weird thing to point out. Hmm, weird. I suppose so. The silk hat and the cloak, right? Mo, everyone knows that Maximilian Galactica has three uppity symbols. Three symbols? Yay, hey, everyone get ready. All together now. Silk hat, cloak, white roses. What the? Who cares if he knew what the, uh, that there were three or not? He saw what he saw and he saw the symbols. He just forgot to mention one. Isn't that right, Mo? Do you like pie? I love pie! Oh, okay. holy shit, if you actually <laughs> recited that fast. Silence, fool, you are responding to the whole truth of no fractions. <laughs> Prove that justice for all is, in fact, beatable. I was just an impulsive idiot at the time. No, it was mostly that you actually told me, hey, there's a weird testimony that involves the poster, and that just made me think, hmm. It was the small little things put together. I probably would have missed the poster entirely. If it was not for you. Order! Order! Mo! You didn't see the roses, did you? To be honest, there weren't any roses on the person I saw. The crime scene was dark. It's obvious it was so too dark to see that kind of detail you just brought up! S -s Light! You said it yourself! But the witness said he was able to see the silhouette of the criminal's face. Not to mention the roses are white. There's no way he could have missed them. Then the roses must have fallen off the defendant assaulted the victim. But then they would have been there at the scene of the crime. If that was the case, then the police would have found them at the scene of the crime. Exactly! Mr. Wright, are these white roses truly material to the facts of this case? Clearly not. He is just toying with this court. I got her on the ropes now. But then it's just weird that there was a, a pre like, hey, don't press on the wrong thing for that just one testimony. That's so weird. These seemingly insignificant facts that have never failed to lead me to the truth yet. Someone is toying with the court, but it's not me. 
Your Honor, don't you recall Trilo's testimony? There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. How can you mistake someone with that crazy get up and his nose stuck up so high? How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three piece get up? Trilo saw them all. Trilo saw all three of Max's symbols. However, this witness claims there were no white roses on the person he saw. There is absolutely no doubt that this is a contradiction. Hmm, now what am I supposed to think? One is supposed to disregard the pointless, but this... Judge, forget the roses. Think about his other testimony. The witness has, sta has stated without a doubt that he saw Maximilian Galactica. And you are exactly right about which one not to press. Oh, yay! Nothing else matters. Let's wrap up this case now. Your Honor, it may be trivial, but it does cast doubt on the prosecution's case. Frankly, I have no my doubts about this witness. It seems that unlike wine, the witness has not grown more mature with age. I'm not mature. I've come to a conclusion. I'm 99% certain that this witness saw the defendant. However, my remaining 1% of doubt is quite reasonable. Which means that for my peace of mind, I'm going to request a bit more testimony. What? If there are no contradictions in his next statement, I am prepared to issue a ruling. A ruling? Nick, this is your last chance. We've been dismantling the witnesses, but he's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just let it happen. Wacko. So, considering that the judge seems like he is super set on making a decision soon, I feel like I should be careful. Espe then again, this is also the one that's just like, aha, if you press on the wrong one, we're gonna penalize you. So, uh, mm, fear, 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 dear, fear. Ba 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 ba. So let's be careful and see what the clown has to say. There's no doubt in my mind. There were no white roses that night. However, all the other symbols were there. I'm equally sure of that. Especially the silk hat. There's no way I could forget seeing the decorations on it. He was wearing it the entire time that he was at the scene. The entire time, you say? Mr. Wright, you've got one last chance at this. Just one chance? I will not allow even the slightest hit of badgering against this witness. Okay, so no pressing for me. The judge is as cringe as, uh, as in a Danganronpa game when you get voted guilty after failing a bullet time battle because the real killer was yelling stupid, stupid, stupid. I have never played Danganronpa, and that sounds ridiculous. I do mean to get to Danganronpa eventually, but th that sounds so weird out of context. But okay, no pressing the witness. If you are going to prove to me that there's a contradiction with Mr. Curl's statement, you'd better have at least a shred of evidence to back up your accusations. Okay, that makes me think that the game is saying, don't press, just present evidence. I've only got a single shot at this. I've got to be careful. I understand, Your Honor. One chance is all I need. I've only played Ding and Rumpel 1, to be honest. Eh. There's no doubt in my mind. I don't think there's anything that we could present to that. There's other things he's equally sure, and especially that silk hat. There's no way I could forget that. He was wearing it the entire time he was at the scene. Except that the hat was found at the scene. So I feel like if we present the hat, we, you can see. Found at the crime scene. So yeah, if he wore it the entire time, it would have left with him. And this is the only thing, because it's really the only thing he talks about is he saw them, he saw the two, he saw the hat, the hat was there the entire time. I'm going to assume it is the hat? I'm going to assume it is hat? This wouldn't happen to be the silk hat you saw that night, would it? Yep, that's it. That's the hat he was wearing that night. No question in your mind. Exactly how would one mistake a thing like that? I see. Is there some sort of problem, Mr. Wright? Miss Von Karma, where exactly was the silk hat found? Must you always ask these questions? It was found at the crime scene. The crime scene? That means... The silk hat fell off at the crime scene. However, the witness clearly testified to the contrary. The witness stated that he was wearing it the entire time that he was on the scene. No! That's not true! 
<laughs> yeah, if, I, if you press, I think if you press anything, you get 40% penalty. Wow. Harsh. At least they give you, uh, like, two or three chances? Order! Order! Order, Mr. Cows! Yes, your honor? What is the meaning of all of this? You are old enough to know better than to behave like this in court! Hey, that's not right! That's so harsh! What's not right here is your eyesight and your testimony! Your memory. Amongst other things! But why are you being so mean to me? What did I do? Let me guess, you just didn't like my jokes or something, right? You didn't have to go and insult my eyesight and my memory, they're both great! Seriously, why? Just because you're sitting above me, no matter how old I can always get younger than you. Whoa! I think this is the first time I've had a witness breakdown on the stand that wasn't the guilty party. Enough of this childish outburst, Mr. Curls! Who do you think you are? I saw him! I swear I saw him! It was Max! Even if he didn't have his roses, he was still wearing his dumb silk hat! I'm telling the truth! He's turned into a bratty little kid. It's pitiful, isn't it? Oh, hey! Bookmarks! <laughs> or bookends! He left the scene wearing that dumb silk hat! He was there! He left the scene? What's the matter, Nick? There's something I've been mulling over for a while now. Mo? What do you want?! You just said that he left the scene. Exactly how did the murderer leave the scene of the crime? What?! He, um, he went... What do you mean, how did he leave the scene? You can't ask me that! Mr. Phoenix Wright is badgering the witness, Your Honor! Objection. This witness's testimony is so full of holes, Miss Von Karma's protest is useless! <laughs> You've got a point. Let's hear what the witness has to say on this matter. Is that all right with you, little guy? Don't talk to me like I'm a little baby! Besides, what kind of stupid question is how did he leave the crime scene? The answer's obvious. He just turned around and walked away. That's what I expected you'd say. You sure that's how it happened? Say what? Huh? I'm not sure I know exactly what you're going with this. Lawyers nowadays sure do love to harp on the smallest details. Do you have any proof to counter this? Uh, the crime scene photo, I assume, because there's no... Look at this picture. Look at this photograph! The problem is the footprints in the snow. Footprints? In this photo, we can clearly see the footprints of the victim. However, where are the criminal's footprints? They aren't there! Ay ay ay! Ay ay ay, Zordon! I'm now in court! So, Mo, exactly how did the criminal escape the scene? Um, he, uh... Your Honor! This witness has already proven that his testimony is completely unreliable! I move to strike all of this witness's testimony from the court record. My agree. This clown's testimony is as rickety as the clown car he came to court in. Wait just a second! You guys can't just ignore everything I've said! Fine, fine, I'll tell you the truth this time! What do you mean, the truth, you clown? You wait a second! I think you've said more than enough for today! That didn't hurt! I'm sick and tired of listening to you anyways! I'll give you the real deal this time, I swear! I don't know why, but I get the feeling things are gonna get worse before they get better. Mr. Lawrence Curls. Yes? The testimony you've provided up until now has been false. It hasn't been false, I haven't lied, it's just... It's just what? It's just I was a bit confused on the bit about the criminal leaving the scene. Especially since Von Karma and her whip told me not to talk about what I really saw. Order! Order! I will have order! Franzika Von Karma, how could you? Curtsy. Your Honor, if you had heard the truth from this witness, you would have exactly the same opinion as I have. What opinion is that? It's not funny. That's enough out of you. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Now then, let's hear the truth about what you saw, Mr. Curls. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, but it's all true, I tell you. Try not to waste our time with your idiotic drivel. I don't think I've ever seen the judge get that angry. 
<laughs> now it's time for our next segment, Monos! Everything that I've said up until now has been the truth. When I looked out the window, the ringmaster was down and Max was standing above him. He wasn't wearing his white roses, but he was wearing the silk hat. That's when I saw he... Flew away? Well, that's ridiculous. This is the truth now. Get ready for it. He flew. He jumped up and flew through the air. He flew right off and disappeared into the darkness. Is it going to turn out to be the monkey somehow? That's why there were no footprints. Blind people don't leave footprints. This feels wacky. I told you it wasn't funny. Do you believe me now? Well, that was, um... How do you put this into words? Maximilian Galactica is a world-class magician. But to leave the scene of a crime by flying, there's no way it actually happened. You... you're right. Why is she right? You believe the other witnesses? Why would you believe me? Especially since it's the best part of the story! Hmm, to be honest... This is the first time I've heard of a flying criminal. What do you think about this witness's testimony, Mr. Wright? I don't even know what to say to this. Because it feels too good to be true that the magician known for flying would, like, do that. This is all a dream, right? Right now, I can't believe any of this. I'm not even sure if this day has been some kind of Kafka-esque dream. Ow! Now do you think it's still a dream? Ah, uh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I suppose I will let you all in on my thinking regarding this matter. The criminal disappeared into the sky, I'd love to believe that. But I just can't wrap my head around how that could actually happen. You imbecile! If you disregard a need for proof, Miss Von Karma's case is sound. However, I've got the feeling that this case is in dire need of more investigation. Thus, I will conclude today's proceedings at this point. In an undisputed fact, the criminal left no footprints at the scene. Tomorrow, I want us to find out the reason behind this mystery of mysteries. Um, uh... uh... I believe that's enough for today. Court is adjourned. Yeah, I can definitely see why this is a that was a very weird testimony. And first time players who have no guidance would be rickrolled into oblivion. Especially because I'm not sure if you could even save in the DS games. Well, GBA games and then DS games. So thank you, save system. Even if I didn't have like people uh, giving hints, because I will allow that was backseating, but it was backseating that, like, considering people were saying, hey, that's weird, I accepted that. <laughs> I, I took a bit of help there. <laughs> There's just the fact that, like, only that first, like, or second, like, one of those testimonies, they're like, oh, yeah, you if you press wrong, we're going to penalize you. That's weird. And then there's the one where, like, oh, you can only present evidence. Luckily, that one was easy. But still, it was weird that on that one where I guess they were hoping that Trilo will have drilled into your head three symbols, but then you'd think that you would present, like, the profile and not the poster. So that's just all weird. Hey, sweeties, what in the world is going on? That's what I want to know. They say the criminal flew off in the air and disappeared. Max, I can't believe I'm asking this, but you didn't fly that night, did you? I know you didn't mean to ask me such a fabulously stupid question. I can't fly whenever I please. It's not that easy. But it looks so effortless for you on stage. It's not that simple. I'm not actually flying on stage. I'm using visible wires and have them hoist me through the air. Wow, you just told me the secret to your magic. No, I broke the first rule. The cardinal rule. The only rule. I'm sorry, Max. We made you break a magician's creed to never reveal the secret to their tricks. Nick, what do you do now? All we can do now is hope we find the flying criminal in court tomorrow. Great idea! Let's do our best and catch this sucker! Also, thank goodness they stopped saying, Look at this photograph after the first game where I would have lost my mind. I still always make that joke, Look at this photograph, because it just amuses me. But yeah, that was a weird... A very weird... 
testimony to break down. Right and go law offices. Um, Nick? What is it? I've got a confession to make. I'm terrible at figuring out magic tricks. Magic tricks? Yet, magic tricks are by their very definition tricks, right? But I can never figure out the tricks when I see them. That's because the tricks are performed by pros. They do it so that you can't guess the trick. But, but, the trick Pearly showed me was incredible! Pearls did a magic trick? Hmm, what kind of trick was it? Let's see, it looked like she pulled the end of her own thumb off! <laughs> First she put her right thumb next to her left hand, and then she separated it! She could move it up and down and everything! It was incredible! Even I know that one. Also, th uh, let's see. And if you thought this was crazy, wait until the case where you have to expose a magic trick while your co-counsel knows it and refuses to say, Why? Why? And if you fail, a 14-year-old gets arrested for firing a gun powerful enough to dislocate a man's shoulder. Why? <laughs> that sounds so weird. All right, can't wait to get to that case someday. Really? Was it kind of like this? What? How? How'd you do that? Nick, you're like a real magician. See, this is why I just can't figure out magic. I'm no good at it. Especially hard tricks like flying away from the scene of a murder. You'll take all the fun out of magic if you keep trying to figure it out. Well, I guess let's go and see how things are. Because that was a fast testimony, probably because I had help and hints. Let's see if there's anything. Also, while you are, uh, after you finish up test uh, cross-examining the testimony of a clown, remember to stay hydrated. Oh, my sweeties! You mind hurrying up and getting me out of this place? We're doing our best, Max. Just hang in there. A little while ago, some people from a local TV station came by. And since I'm a famed magician, they said, Let's make you your very own TV special! Really? What kind of TV special? Maximilian Galactica, the greater prison escape. It would be aired live. Hey, that sounds like it would be an awesome special. But if I do the special before I'm acquitted, they'll never let me out of here for real. Well, it would surely be an unnes unnecessary addition to your troubles of the law. That's what I was thinking. But the production staff is already working on the show. W wouldn't that mostly just be on them then? It's just like, I'm sorry, they're obsessed with me. They want to break me out of here for their riches. If you don't get me out quick, I'll have no choice but to stage a real prison break. You seem awfully calm about that possibility. I'd have no choice. It would be a contractual obligation. That's show business. <laughs> you have signed the contract? I don't think you can sign a contract that's just like, ah, yes, I have to try and escape from jail. Um, the night of the crime. You didn't happen to fly off into the sky, did you? Here is how everything went down, sweetie. At the time of the murder, I was sitting in the ringmaster's room. Not to mention, flying off into the sky is not something I can do at will. I don't care what that stoogy clown says, it wasn't me. Max, Max, do you mind teaching me the trick behind flying? Mm, you'll have to forgive me, sweetie. The difference between me and cheap imitation magicians is that I keep my mouth shut, except for the, you know, telling us the thing in the... Did Maya just forget? I don't teach people tricks, but I will say this much. It's much harder than you think. I was thinking about this in the court today. I've got a favor to ask of you. Anything for you, sweetie? Be friends with the other performers in the circus. Fabulous, a great joke. Why would I be friends with a bunch of hacks like them? But... I've won on the world stage. I won the International Grand Prix. International Grand Prix? Performers should always look to perform on the world stage. But the performers at the circus are completely and utterly devoid of ambition. That is something that I can simply not tolerate. Ambition, huh? Something about what Max just said rings true to my ears. Oh my, my sweeties want to hear all about the Grand Prix, don't they? To be honest, though, I've told this story like a hundred times already, so it's a bit boring. We're sorry to make you tell it again. You must not have heard me. I'm really sick of telling this story. But what can you do? I'm Maximilian Galactica. I suppose I can tell it again. Voila! Here, take a look at this! I just happen to have a picture from the Grand Prix with me. Just look at that fabulous stage! That is just the first stage I ever flew on. I flew right over the audience. That actually does look pretty amazing. 
the crowd erupted into applause. At that time, I thought to myself, I could die right then and die a happy man. I'll never forget how it felt that night. The emotions, the acclaim. Wow. <coughs> By the way, I think everyone who's a performer should get to get to experience that feeling. I just wish I could explain that to the other people in the circus. That's incredible, Max. I want a trophy too. Hey Nick, how about you buy me a trophy? That's not how you earn a trophy, Maya. My sweeties, you can have this picture of my triumph. Just make sure you show it to all the other members of the circus. Look and learn. That's what you should tell them. Learn how to get thrown in jail? Hmm, but that is an interesting, like, philosophy, I guess. That he kind of looks down on the circus performers because they don't reach into the sky to try and be the best or something. You hear that? It sounds like two people arguing. Probably Trilo. All right, let's do it. Are you ready? Yes, uh, uh, wait. Quit your whining. Let's just give this a shot already. All right, let's go. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. What are you doing? Gently down the stream. Come on, you know that. I'm trying my best, but Trilo, this isn't going to work. Do you enjoy saying dumb things? You're going to have to be on your own someday. If you can't handle something as simple as this, what are you going to do then? Hello, Ben. Hello to you too, Trilo. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're a secret crash training course? I'm sorry. Secret crash training? Whoa. Yes, Trilo wouldn't give up until I said we'd try out his idea for a new routine. So, we were trying to sing in a round for our new ventriloquism act. He's an interesting character. Apparently, the anime touches on it even better. My friend who actually likes third cases has only seen the anime for this game. I wonder what they'd think. Hmm. I've never seen the anime just yet. Maybe sometime I'll see it. It would be interesting to see if they shift things around and such. In a round? You can really do that? That's incredible! See, see? Even they're surprised by the idea. I told you! They're not the only ones. You even surprised me with your idea. Once we've got a grip on the basics, then it's just a matter of practice. Y you think so? Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to give you this back to you. Ah, there it is! Now that I've got this ring back, it's time to take one more shot at Regina. Um, I know that you already testified in court today. You want to talk about what we saw, right? Yes. Well, at first we thought it was the old man. Just looking at his walk and how he acted, right, Ben? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. But then we said hello and we didn't even get a reply. Not to mention he was draping those gaudy symbols. What would you have thought if he wasn't wearing those symbols? Hmm, uh, what do you think, Ben? What? Oh, um, I would have thought it was the ringmaster. Something just isn't adding up here. I wonder what they really saw. Uh, Trilo, stop, please. No romance ever goes well in Ace Attorney. <laughs> Actually, yeah, probably. In fact, this game opened up with a romance that ended poorly. I was hoping I could ask you about Regina. I'm completely serious about her. That's why I'm wait that's why I'm waiting for her even now. Really? That's so sweet. But if you really wanted to see Regina, shouldn't you check the tent? Ha! <laughs> you haven't got a clue about things, do you, sweetheart? Eh? Waiting like this is part of being in love. How so? If you had a clue, you would know that waiting is such sweet, wonderful torture. When your body aches for your partner's love, that's one of the best parts! Um, yeah, I knew that. Poor Maya. She's so red, she looks like a vine-raped tomato. Tomato? Oh no! Phoenix is becoming a puppet! So how's this new routine working out? Will you two just take a chill pill already? Our routine's a secret! We're gonna take the ventriloquism world by storm! Oh, it'll be a real revolution! That sounds incredible! But let me make one thing clear. We're not going to take on the world just because that jerk said we should! That jerk? Max Galactica! Performer should aim for the world! Who does he think he is? Trilo, you seem to be really fired up about all this. He needs to realize that he isn't the only one who can conquer the world stage! 
You're right. You're right. Mark my words, I, Trillo Priest, will win the Grand Prix! You're the man now, doll. <laughs> roll, 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 your boat will be the key to our glorious victory! Um, not to rain on your parade, but wouldn't a more mature song be the best? Hey, you've got to start somewhere, right? Don't screw this up! You've got to be a part of this, too! Well, I guess let's, uh, see what he thinks of this. Would you mind taking a look at this? Uh, um, I, I, I um, that, uh, uh, I, I, it, it's... I guess we won't need to look at this after all. How about seasoning salt? Nope. Yeah, fair enough. I, w I wait moronically for my crushes, too. All of them. I don't. Then again, I've never really been in a position to have a crush, really. I guess let's head into the big top. Huh? Where's Regina? I don't know. But if she's with that tiger, I don't want to find out. Let's hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> Nick, you're kind of a chicken, aren't you? No, 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 no. I'm just um, allergic to wild tigers. There doesn't seem to be anything new here. So let's head to the ringmaster's room. Again, there's that fake mustache on the table. That has to be something. Max and the ringmaster had their talk in this room. That could have been when the ringmaster put on Max's costume and went outside. Why'd he do that anyway? Was it really that cold or something? Well, it's all new again. Applied makeup, quite a collection. All natural, sensitive. And they call this the face of someone who already knew that. Hmm. What? A scrap of white paper is sticking out of the coat pocket. Huh? Where? Where? Calm down, Maya. You can't just go rummaging through people's coats. But I swear if that's actually an important thing. This is the table. Doesn't seem to be anything new here. So we should probably move along to the cafeteria. They still haven't cleaned up this place. If Curly got one look at the state of this place, she'd slap whoever was in charge of this pl across the face. Remind me to never invite her to my office. Ow. Hmm. Once again, doesn't seem like there's... Seasoning. Why are there small seasoning bottle? These kind of look like that. I wonder. Then again, they would have been really small in like the GBA games, so who knows if that's important actually. Doesn't seem like there's anything here. Then I guess for now, let's try and head uh, to the lodge. Or to the lodge. Oh, it's you. Oh, it's you two. You look like you just got hit by a truck. Shouldn't you get some rest? Uh, I'm taking a rest right now, pal. I've been listening to some crazy clown's life story. Miss Van Karma told me to come down here and do this for her. Yeah, I figured as much. Let me tell you something, pal. Listening to that clown sucks all your energy. Every time he's done talking, he looks at you like you should be doing something. Um, I think he's waiting for you to laugh at his jokes. I know that, pal. Do you have any idea how much your face hurts if you're fake laughing that much? Francica really set you up bad this time, didn't she? If you ask me, you should be listening to... She should be listening to Mo herself. No way, pal. You're not gonna get me to backbite a woman with a whip. No way. Why are you defending her? Prosecutor of has always got her eyes on us. And every time you definitely don't want her to show up, poof! There she is! Don't show up, don't show up, don't show up, don't show up, don't show up! Looks like she's wound up, wound him up pretty tight. She's directly above us as we speak. Huh? How's that possible? According to the clown, the culprit jumped from here and disappeared into the sky. If that's what happened, it means the killer passed right by this window, pal. Oh, I see. Who lives in that room? Behind the window up there. The acrobat's got his room up on the third floor, it seems. Pretty soon, Miss Van Kama's gonna start an investigation up there. So don't get any ideas of going up to the acrobat's room, got it, pal? 
<laughs> Francica von Karma. When she's done with her investigation, I think I'll go up there and check it out. Wingmaster's body was found here. Film made him look like he was carrying a big wooden box. But what in the world actually happened? Because it's a big, heavy box that only had, like, the pepper in it. Is it, is it possible that the box fell from the sky, knocked him over the head while he was standing, which, like, broke his neck but kept him standing, and then after the box fell to the ground in totality, he slumped over it? But then, why, how would that explain the... Hmm. Because I'm just trying to think it over. Because if we assume that it was the ringmaster who wore the suit, and again, we haven't seen his face yet, so I think that the stupid goddamn removable mustache is going to play a role. How'd you figure that out? You're not making things up now, are you? Well, your horses. It was easy to figure out. It was snowing before the murder, right? Well, look at the condenser. The snow is still piled up on top of it. Wow, Nick! I'm impressed. Maybe you should be a PI instead of an attorney. Well, we do have to kind of... <laughs> we do kind of have to do investigative work as an attorney, I guess. The safety light was on at the time of the murder, wasn't it? And that's what they say. There were performers in the lodging house, so it makes sense that it was on. I bet the killer was worried that someone would spot them during the crime. Something's covered up by this tarp. An old sign, perhaps. Nick, look out! They've got the killer trapped behind that tarp! What? It wasn't funny? You know, it wouldn't have hurt you to look even a little bit surprised. Whew, she didn't notice that I was too scared to talk. Or... Is this like a crane? Is this like a crane, and it was like working the night of the murder, and it like would have wires on the coat? But that still doesn't explain why the ringmaster would be wearing the coat and hat, and then either somebody... Or maybe just the coat and hat would be tied to that. Then he'd get clocked over the head. It's weird. I'm sure more information will come about. Mo's not here. If he was here, you would have been able to tell uh, before you even stepped into his room. I'm sure you would have heard him laughing away. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What do you think he's laughing at when he's all by himself? I always thought he was just thinking up new jokes. Hmm, he must really love his work. There doesn't seem to be anything new here, so I don't think we need... So I guess... Right, ah! For some reason, my brain really wants to... Click in different patterns when I want to move. Well, since we ran into them, maybe we need to go into the big top now? If not, then we're not done with Trilo. I guess we're not done with Trilo. Oh, here we go. All right! Welcome to the wonderful, the fabulous, the cafeteria! Ah, yikes, he's in an awfully good mood. All right, you know what time it is. Riddle time! Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza? Um, come on, you can answer this, it's easy! Because cafeteria Mexican pizza is possibly a weapon of bowel destruction? Buzz! Wrong! Try again! Okay, what do you think, girly? Um, ah, I got it! Okay, what's your answer? Because they're in the caf- a uh, cafe- a uh, cafe teary-eye. Uh, but uh, what does that have to do with Mexican pizza? Exactly! It's an incredibly sad place, that cafe. <laughs> I did it! What's going on? He's being too nice. Today's been a really crazy day, hasn't it? You know, you're telling me. I didn't think it was going to be so tough. Tough? Yeah, it was a tough crowd. That's what you call a crowd that refuses to laugh. For instance, it was such a tough crowd this morning, I just smashed watermelons. Hmm. I told them all a great story and even greater jokes, but no one busted off laughing. We even used the famed no shoes, no shirt, no service joke. Exactly! How can you not laugh at study comedy like that? Are you 100% sure about your testimony today? I saw what I saw, I swear! That crib just... Flew through the air? 
It wasn't exactly flying per se, it was more like floating. The silhouette of his face made me positive it was Max! I don't see a Cyclock, he must be telling the truth. Well, <laughs> okay, okay, that's neat. Phoenix Wright is metagaming. I love that. Phoenix Wright is metagaming. I kind of do enjoy that they're like, hey, if he has the ability to see Cyclops, shouldn't he be able to see lies? So they actually, that's neat. Ah, uh, not this picture. He showed it to you guys too. Huh? You've seen it as well? Well, you know what they say about Maximilian Galactica. He really gets around. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he didn't just show me the picture. What do you mean? He showed me his bust too. Let me... Are you telling me that somebody rigged up Maximilian Galactica's... That bust right there... In a floating outfit, presumably from a crane that's wrapped up in tarp in the plaza. But why would they go through that? What is the purpose? I mean, Morgan didn't have any Cyclops, and look how she turned out. But at the same time, that's probably because she technically didn't lie when talking to, like, Phoenix, maybe? I, it's been a bit since I've actually seen the specific words, but it's possible that uh, her specific words were carefully chosen, so she wasn't technically lying, but, like, lying through omission. So she wasn't making a true contradiction, she was just saying something that, while not, like, would lead you to believe something while not being fully wrong. But yeah, um, somebody got the bust of Maximilian, let, put on his coat, maybe not the hat because it has a hat built into it, and had it fly away, presumably on the crane that's, I assume, behind the tarp. Right, because she knows about and can play around the mag Magatama from a certain point of view. Exactly that, but I don't even think that she, like, assumed Phoenix had the Magatama or knew how to use it. I think she just, from a principle, wanted to make sure that she didn't say anything that would sh show any kind of uh, suspicion on her. Then again, maybe she did know that the Magatama was a thing, and over the years of wanting to vie for the position of master of the Fey clan, would have trained herself to never outright lie so as to protect herself or something. Who knows? She seems to be a mentally fortified individual like that. Because remember, I don't think that we really cross-examined her that much. I think her, if, like, if I remember, there were, weren't any contradictions in her testimony. It wasn't until Eeny Meeny, Eeny Meeny Mimi came in. He showed me his bus too. Let me tell you, that thing is enormous. Exactly. It's in the picture, I think. He'd make, a, he'd make us worship it every day. He made us bow to his greatness. True, true. She is narcissistic, after all. Her only cross-examination had only presses. He's got a big bust? I wouldn't mind <laughs> hearing more about Max's bust. Not that I'm into that sort of thing. Max's bust should be on that small table over there. There's nothing over there. Really? Oh yeah. Hmm, when was it? I'd say about five days ago, all of a sudden, the bust disappeared. It disappeared? If you want to see it, there's a photo on the bulletin board over there. Max just had to put it the picture up. Mm, hey, this thing really is cool. Nick, Nick, I want, I want someone to make a bust of me. Sure, as long as I'm not paying for it. Aww. Is there anything else that's changed about the place? Nope, nothing's changed that I can see. Th that I can see. I wonder if he's actually thinking about this or if he's setting up a bad joke. Nope, nope, I'm drawing a blank here. A quiet mo is a good mo in my book. I guess there really isn't any other thing that, uh, things that have changed, huh? Well, there is one teensy tiny thing that does seem different. Tell us, tell us! Well, on the morning of the crime, over on the bulletin board, this piece of paper was posted front and center. Piece of paper? It's written in Japanese. 
its tone, so I don't know what it said, but I could see the title. Yikes! It says, to the murderer. M murderer Yep, that's what it says. But the rest of it's been ripped off. Moe's are to be seen, not heard. Ah, so maybe maybe Mo should go from telling jokes to uh, slapstick comedy. And I don't know who posted it. Ah, when did you find this? The morning before the murder. Before the murder? Yeah, the ringmaster was killed the night after this paper was discovered. Who in the world posted this thing? Could it be that maybe Regina put it up because she felt her father killed, uh, like, Leon? Her tiger? Or lion? But now I'm thinking, what if it was an act? Well, well, I'll get to it. Nick, I think we better follow up on this important lead. Okay. With the new information... I think I have an idea of what have might have happened. Because... Hmm... Maybe... I'm trying to think. What could it be? Because... The Ringmaster was talking with Maximilian that night about Maximilian getting his daughter's hand in marriage. Then, the ringmaster leaves, saying that it will only take ten minutes, and seemingly goes out wearing Max's cloak, hat, and roses. But then... What if... Because, what if the ringmaster was the one who took away the bust? for whatever reason, put it in that big box. Because there's no reason for that box to just have the seasoning in it. And that would also explain the seasoning, for whatever reason. Maybe while grabbing the bust, the ringmaster also grabbed some pepper and threw it into the box as well, for some reason. Then on the night that he was talking with Max, he left, got the box, and carried the box hidden within the cloak, and that's why, like, Trilo and Ben didn't notice it. And for whatever reason, again, presuming that there is indeed a crane underneath that tarp, because, yeah, what if the acrobat wanted to do, like, practice away from the tent, so maybe they had a crane there for whatever reason. But then, the, like, I assume, like, the ringmaster would, like, take out the bust of Maximilian, put the cloak over it, and either it already had the hat or he put the hat on it, and, like, was doing something with the craned bust, and, like, it swung back and hit him on the back of his head, and he slumped over. Like, that's an idea I have. Again, presuming that there is a crane, because obviously they're gonna have to explain how it's possible that, like, it, this has to be involved because there was no footprints, but it was the silhouette of Max, and it had to have flown away somehow. Everything's just weird. But that, and that also doesn't explain like this, which, again, maybe is from Regina to her father about the quote-unquote murder of her lion. Maybe. I don't know. Everything is wonky. Do you know about this? No, he does not. Do you know about this? No, he does not. Well, then I guess we'll go to the plaza. Maybe we need to go back to the detention center to present the picture of the bust to ask about its thievery. Do you know anything about this note? On the morning of the murder, it was posted on the wall in the cafeteria. I do know, I do know all about that note. When I read it, my heart certainly skipped a beat. Your heart skipped a beat? 
while I was enjoying my morning tea, the ringmaster and company entered the room. And company? I guess it wasn't really a company, it was just the ringmaster and my sweetie pie. When the ringmaster read the note, he turned an incredible bright red. All of a sudden, he tore it off the wall and shoved it into the pocket of his tailcoat. Really? Out of curiosity, what in the world was written on that thing? Let's see... Uh-huh. Oh, I don't want to steal the fun from my sweeties. Go and find it on your own! I'm sure you can find it somewhere. You might also want to ask my sweetie pie princess. All right, so... Fabulous, you'd like me to sign this for you? <laughs> All right, so... The, I knew that that little piece of diddly D in the coat pocket would be important. Is she gonna be in the ringmaster's room? All right, well, no, we'll just be able to see it. Hey, do you see that? There's a scrap of paper shoved into the pocket of the tailcoat. You know, I've got a feeling I know what that is. I bet that's the other half of the note that Mo gave us. And let's hurry up and check this thing out, Nick. I knew it! It fits perfectly with the other piece. What does it say? What does it say? To the murderer, I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Meet me at 10 p.m. tonight at the lodging house plaza. Tonight at 10 p.m.? That's when the murder took place. Now we need to find out who called the ringmaster. All right, so maybe not about the murder of the lion. Huh. It's very interesting. Are you still here, Mo? Are you gone? What? Mo's gone. There's a message on the bulletin board. I'm hungry, so I'm off to get some hamburgers. Love, Mo. Hmm, hamburger. I'm just thinking about making me hungry. All of a sudden, I need a burger bad. All of a sudden, I need a new partner bad. Don't you say that about the love of your life, Phoenix. How dare you. Do you know what this has to say? All right, apparently Ben doesn't give a shit. You think that that would be important thing to bring up? That there was a thing leading him out there at 10 p.m. What about this? Fabulous. Okay, he apparently doesn't care. Weird. It actually, it's also kind of weird that Mo had that. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. I'm sure you did a good job as usual. Well, I am done with the investigation of the acrobat. Finally. But with Miss Von Karma. Is it your pager? Nick, what is that? That beeping sound. Hmm. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? Every time I hear that sound, she's usually not very far behind. Some sort of pager or something? If you don't mind, pal, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Quick. See ya, pal! I didn't know that Gumshoe could run that fast. So much for being a flatfoot. Never seen a grown man so afraid of a girl still in her teens. Well, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. The winds are biting as- OW! Now that's just assault. It's not even in court. As biting as lashes from a whip. Is this the first time you've been hit with that, Maya? Von- 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 Karma! She really did appear! It was a real battle today in court, wasn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Did you have to jump out and scare us like that? What can I do for you? Tomorrow will be the day, the day my dream finally comes true. You mean the story of my defeat at your hands making national news? <laughs> national news? You possess such a small sense of scale. The global news, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Your miserable plight will be known internationally. I think she might be overestimating the importance of a win by just a smidge. Miss Von Karma, it appears you got your hands onto something big, huh? Ha, I'm amazed you picked up on that much. Anyone could. You couldn't hide that look of victory of ten paper bags on your head. I've got conclusive evidence and a conclusive witness. Need any more hints? A conclusive witness? You must mean the acrobat, right? I'm putting in the summons for him to be called as a witness as we speak. It's the final nail in your coffin, Mr. Phoenix, right? Yeah, 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 I get it already. You want to beat me and destroy me? I can't worry about her. I've got to try and find out more information myself. Why do you keep giving Nick the evil eye? It doesn't matter if you prove the defendant guilty tomorrow. Nothing will be able to bring your dad back. 
My dad? You must mean the esteemed man Fred von Tama. Of course, your dad. I know you miss him. Enough out of you. One more word and I'll and you'll get a mouthful of whip. Now, when did I ever bring up my papa's name in this or in any other conversation? Then, then what's this revenge thing you're talking about? You wouldn't understand, Mr. Phoenix, right? I have to see him again one more time. Is the, does this tie in to... Because if she doesn't care about Manfred von Karma, does this mean that she's talking about Edgeworth? That's the only other character I could think of that could even be remotely tied to you. Him? I'm sure you know to whom I refer. Okay, okay, they just came out and said it. Miles Edgeworth. What? Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? M -m -m Miles e Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. What would you even bring him up? You haven't forgotten, have you? Do you know who it was that trained the gifted prosecutor Miles Edgeworth? Manfred von Karma. Exactly right. It was my papa. That means that Edgeworth was right again. Miles was like a little brother to me. But he's older than you. Huh? Little brother? But Edgeworth and Nick are the same age. Edgeworth. Are we ever going to learn what happened to the man? The man who inspired me to become an attorney. <sighs> Fought against him in a few cases. But a little after that case was over. He vanished. It's your fault he's gone. Huh? It's the truth, isn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... I... Nick, what does she mean? He's not dead. He can't be dead. I know this because I know there are games based on him. Nick, he can't be dead. He's a fan favorite. I highly doubt that he would be dead. I accidentally skipped because I'm monologuing. Never set foot into court again. Except for Rise from the Ashes, which is dubious canon. And then one day, he just vanished. All he left was a simple note at the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. That was one year ago. I mean, Mia Fey was my favorite. Mia Fey is a good character. I wonder how often... <laughs> For some reason, my brain chuckled at the thought of Mia showing up somehow in the great Ace Attorney, even, even though that's like many, many, many decades, even like a century in the past. It was a few months after you left to go home. They tried to shoehorn in Rise from the Ashes in the uh, Steam Edition, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? He's dead? Oh no, I like Edgeworth more, but like, <laughs> but she was. Ah, <laughs> understandable. I don't believe it. He's still alive, I'm sure of it. Somewhere in this world, he's still alive. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Of course he did. You ruined his reputation as a prosecutor. You effectively killed the prosecutor and him. Well, why did he, like, not seem to care all that much until I, like, proved that he was innocent? There's a line about Rise from the Ashes coming up, if I remember correctly. Ooh. I kind of like that. Just like yours, victory muddied the honorable name Van Karma. Because, like, if they're going to have Rise from the Ashes in the game, I would like if it was, like, actually referenced and not skipped over. Even if some people dislike it, I liked it, so I wouldn't mind the references. I'm going to find him, and then I'm going to teach him his rightful place with my own two hands. N Nick, I'm about Mr. Edgeworth. Maya, I already told you this once. Don't make me do it again. Don't bring up his name in front of me again, okay? Nick? Miss Von Karma. What? I don't know if you're God's gift of prosecutors or not, but I've had about enough of you. Him too! What What in the world happened? Hmm. <laughs> this dog is all bark and no bite. He's already been defeated. Regardless, I have nothing to inform of you two today. Tomorrow will be the greatest courtroom battle this country has ever seen. Doubtful. Rise from the Ashes is my favorite trilogy case and second favorite case overall. Eh, I probably wouldn't go that far. I personally prefer the fourth case of the first game. I forget its name. Turnabout Goodbyes. Because it just it fits so well. 
again, Rise from the Ashes is really cool. It's just its issues kind of bring it down a little bit, but not, not too much. Let's go. We need to talk to the performer on the third floor. I'm sorry I brought it up, Nick. Why does M Nick have to be an asshole? Huh. You're in a wheelchair. Interesting. I'm glad it exists for those select few, lol. I'll say goodbye was objectively the best. That's a fair thing to say. You can always like something more than an objectively better thing because of personal preference. You must be Phoenix Wright. Yes. Pleased to meet you. I'm Ken... Ken Dingling. Kendling. Is it because you're gonna turn out to be a funeral pyre? But here at the circus, everyone just calls me Acro. Mr. Acro. Um, how do you know my name? The detective told me. He said you'd definitely show up here. Acro, you're a member of the circus as well? That's right. I mainly performed on the tightrope or the flying trapeze. But nowadays, all I perform in is my wheelchair. Why do they have to put on the circus music? <laughs> that almost makes it humorous. Acro, why did you join the circus? When I was a kid, my parents failed miserably at business. And then one night, they decided to run away from it all without me. The only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. The ringmaster took such incredible care of me. He was truly a lifesaver. It seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. He was. That's why I decided to do something very important. I decided that I would devote my entire life to finding a way to repay him. And now, look at how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. It's such a shame. Sometimes I think that he was almost too kind. Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. That's a lot to talk about uh, on your first meeting. <laughs> yeah. My parents ran away with me. Without me. My parents ran away, so I was stuck in the circus. <laughs> hmm, I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina's so cute, she's truly a princess. Truly a princess? Are you sure that's a good thing? Um, hmm, do I detect a hint of a grudge against Regina? Um, I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheelchair? The nerves in my legs were badly damaged. And you can't walk right now? I can't even stand now. And since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. Huh. That's awful. The accident happened during an acrobatic session, right? Um... Oh, <laughs> really? Okay. Cyclops! It doesn't seem like Acro's injuries were acrobatic in nature. What's on your mind, Mr. Phoenix? Mr. Wright? Well, exactly when were you injured? It's been almost six months since I was hurt. I injured my legs during practice. Six months ago. What in the world went on at this circus, then? I stopped by yesterday and noticed that you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Ah, you went there for rehabilitation? What about the murder? Of course I knew about it. I spoke with the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. Huh? I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. What you saw? Jeez, that sounded really ominous. What did you see, Acro? That night, I was in bed sleeping when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see. The scene of the crime was right below your window. And that's when I looked out the window. What did you see? Okay, that's gotta be terrifying. Hmm, I wonder where his wheelchair is. You'd think that he would have it by his bed if he needed it. He was flying straight up into the air. He? Maximilian Galactica. What? That's what I thought he'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying. I am absolutely sure. 
There's no doubt in my mind. N Nick. Hmm. I wonder why he would lie about his, like, injury. Hmm. What's this? That's what you want to know. It was posted in the cafeteria the morning before the murder. In the cafeteria. What happened? It suddenly looks incredibly serious. If it's got something to do with her, then you should go straight to the source. Her? Regina. Ask her about it. Maximilian Galactico, right? You'll have to forgive me, but I try not to think about him. Akron won't even look at it. It looks like something's really weighing on him. Yeah, it's the same thing. Anything that involves Galactica will be ignored. What do you think of this? I'm sorry, but in my present physical condition, I don't really know much about what goes on outside of this room. Oh, we're sorry. Don't worry about it. No need to apologize. What about the monkey? <laughs> Money is a great friend to me. That pile of treasure over there is his collection, huh? It is indeed. Money will bring anything back with him. Aw, that's so cute. Yeah, I'm not great with the ladies, but I seem to be pretty popular with the animals. This guy seems chill. But I wonder if that will come back in some way. Well, let's ask him about everyone. I was hoping you could shed some light on Ben. Well, he'll always be here. And as long as he's here, he really can only continue to be a ventriloquist. Whether that's a good thing for him or not, I'm afraid I can't really say. What do you think of Mo? The Ringmaster really believed in Mo, 100%. What will happen to the circus now that the Ringmaster's gone? The beginning of Lawrence Curl's era, I suppose. I wonder if it's really alright to let Mo run the show. Mr. Wright, you don't know much about Mo, I suspect. You can see right through me. Ah, Nick, you can't let him get to you like that. You're an attorney. The Ringmaster, he was even more of a father to me. More than a father to me. When he took me in, the circus was in bad shape. It was obvious that he had no real way of supporting us. But who does he mean by us? Is that why you started with acrobats? Back then, I was only nine years old. I begged the ringmaster to let me try, and he finally gave in. Having a kid in the circus was probably the last thing in the world he wanted. I just wanted to be helpful, so I could help the ringmaster. That's such a nice story. <laughs> the only sensible person in the circus. It's weird, but I actually love Mo. Eh, maybe a, a later on, once we actually get a feel for him, we'll see. Hmm, so if he was nine when he started... Let's see. Quick math. About 17 years he's been in the circus. Where is her mother? Regina. She's cool, isn't she? And can you believe such a cute girl is an animal tamer? It seems animals are not the only thing she tames. Huh? Max, the ringmaster, Ben. She's got them all under her thumb. What do you mean by that? Hmm, maybe I went a bit overboard. It's just Regina's innocence. She was incredibly sheltered as a child. I'd say it seems that way. That's why she can be cruel. What? Regina is just like the animals she claims to tame. She's innocent, but she can be cruel. I wonder what happened between Acro and Regina. I guess maybe see if you get more uh, of an opinion. You want to know about Max? Well, his colleagues in the circus all seem to hate him. What about you, Acro? I've got my issues with him as well, but he just also happens to have a diamond shining in his soul. A diamond shining in his soul? I guess you could say it is his pride as a performer. We didn't have that pride in ourselves before Max arrived. Honestly, I think he brought something wonderful to the circus when he came. Acro, this guy is really different from the other members of the circus. Hmm. I'm starting to move towards, like, wondering if, hmm, let's see, is there anything else I want to show you? 
Nah, he just said go, like, hunt down... Regina, so I guess let's go hunt down Regina. He doesn't care about anything that we've got. Oh, maybe we can ask him about... What he thinks of Acro. Nope, does not care. Lol. Well, I'm going to assume you're back. I'm... Arr, I've got a bad feeling about this. Arr. Ah! Nick! Wonderful! Today's special must be Phileo Phoenix! Stay! Stay heal! Oh, Maya, Nick, it's you guys. I'm sorry, I guess I made a mistake. A m mistake Yeah, little one. I was thinking of teaching whatever primate was out there a lesson. But I was expecting more of a monkey than a human. Hmm. A monkey? Well, let's talk about you, Russell Berry. It's a pity about what happened to the ringmaster. Dad? Everyone loved him, didn't they? He must have been quite a man. He was! I love my dad so much, that's why I don't care about his death. I hate to say it, but she doesn't seem all that broken up about her father. Does she not understand what death is? That's why I feel so lonely. Now that I won't be able to see him for a while. For a while? Yeah. When Leon died, I talked with my dad and he told me that. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. A s star? That means my dad is looking down on me from the sky. That's why I love the night so much. I can see everyone who's gone. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. That's kind of sweet. But I bet you there's no way that Maya believes that. What do you mean there's no way I believe that? <laughs> do you think that one day I'll be a star too? Of course. You really think so? Yeah, you will. I think. I've got a feeling that everyone is doing great up there in the sky. I wonder if everything's all right with Regina. I'm beginning to think that maybe she was so sheltered that maybe she killed her dad for some reason. And part of that is because she doesn't really understand death. Just to go, ba uh, go back and clear something up, why do you want to teach Money a lesson? Because he's a meanie. He's got something that means a lot to me. Something that means a lot to you? It must be something shiny, right? Um, actually, it's a stage costume. It's got lots of spangles. It's really beautiful. You should see it. We should? When the costume gets hit by the spotlight, it dazzles. Hey, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you saw that monkey, you'd get my costume back for me, wouldn't you? It's really important to me. <laughs> Gladly, but of course. I'll get it for you. Leave it all up to us. Guess there's no turning down that request. Yay, you're really gonna do it? Well, I guess, uh, maybe, do you know about? That's Pepper, isn't it? From the cafeteria. Knew it. Ah, uh, it's from the cafeteria? It's not, I remember seeing it there. Hmm, so this was in the cafeteria's Pepper. You know, I'm not a big fan of Pepper. There's no denying it, Max is cool. I want to try flying someday with Max. She's already flown off into her own little world. Nick, I want to try flying too. Ah, uh, okay, I'll think about it. He just buys her a plane ticket. Ah, uh, it's Acro. Is he, is he in his room today? Yes, he is. We just came back from meeting with him. I hope his legs get better soon. Acro's so incredible, especially on the trapeze. The trapeze is that enormous swinging, uh, swing hanging from the top of the tent, right? Yep, that's it. I really want to see him up there again. Acro the Acrobat. That's strange. Acro doesn't seem to have very many nice things to say about Regina. But Regina seems to like Acro just fine. Well, maybe show this. Regina, have you ever seen this before? Uh, I know what this is. Really? Well, it was in my pocket for a while. It was in your pocket? This piece of paper was in your pocket. Hmm, I guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast uh, time. Breakfast time? Yeah, I always take Acro to oh, his breakfast in the morning. That's when I also take out, uh, take out the trash in his room. Then I go to the cafeteria and eat my own breakfast. That's when you realized the piece of paper was in your pocket? Yep, but since I'm not a murderer, I just figured it belonged to someone else's pocket. And then what? I wondered if the person who lost it was in trouble, so... You didn't put it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria, did you? I did! I stuck it up there! How'd you know? Huh. So it was Regina who put it up there. When did this happen? Um, the morning of the murder, I think. That explains a lot. I wonder who wrote this. 
All right, that changes a lot. So Regina was the murderer being referred to in the note. To the murderer? You haven't forgotten what happened six, m six months ago. What the hell? What did happen? All right, so a supposed murder took place six months ago. Acro is good with... It can't be Acro, though, can it? Huh. I'm trying to think. This is weird. It was the morning of the murder. And the ringmaster took it. But it was addressed to Regina. Was the murder plot meant for Regina? That's so wonky. I don't know what to think about that. Because this has to tie back into the the, the, the lion dying, right? Okay, like, the lion might have died. And Acro says he's good with animals. So would he have been... Like, would he have blamed Regina? Because maybe... Like, was the lion involved in a stunt with Acro, and because of Regina, the lion did something, so the ringmaster had the lion put down? I'm trying to think. Something smells fantastic, so we know it can't be Mo. Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers! Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to the Bistro du Cirque, aka uh, the cafeteria! Uh, it smells so good in here, and those burgers look great! She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. My burgers are the best! Juicy meat, toasted buns, special sauce. They're absolutely irresistible to anyone with a hankering for a burger. One bite will send you into hamburger heaven! I bet I can tell by the smell. Whoa, I'm getting hungry too. These burgers must have some kind of special power. But I'm just trying to think. Now that the ringmaster is gone, what are you going to do? That's all I've thought about the past two days. Everyone loved Russell. Well, you've heard Acro's story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? He calmed down a bit now, but he was livid when he heard about the murder. Acro was so upset that he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yeah, he was. Anyways, I gave it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. I've been thinking about trying on the ringmaster's shoes. What? Really? Max would still be an issue, though. Max? He may be a bit mean and hard to work with, but it's hard to argue his importance. He's probably the reason the circus is still around. Well, a lot of what he says is right. Mo, all that's left to see if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know. The tragedy, you know. Is it the six months ago? Get over what tragedy, Mo? Huh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing, nothing at all. He must mean the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Yes, yes, that's it. You're right, girly. Ding, dang, 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 grug the moon, though. Doesn't he mean ding? Mo, I mean no disrespect here, but are you lying to us? Uh, no, not at all. What makes you think that? Cyclox, just the way you said, if everyone can get over the tragedy seemed a bit strange. It sounded like you were talking about something from a long time ago. <laughs> Mo, I'm right, aren't I? Two Cyclops! Oh boy! My favorite! But it's only two. Hmm, so now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It was just a little accident. <laughs> Give me a break! Those old men have accidents. I wear big pants for a reason. Six months ago, eh? Well, I guess let's show him some evidence and see what he has to say. And uh, since this is a tour, I'll... Try him first. Let's see here. To the murderer. That's far from polite. Where did you find the rest of this note anyway? Maybe best if I didn't tell Mo where he found it. Don't worry about it, Mo. If I didn't need to worry about it, you shouldn't have to show it to me. Let's see what he thinks of Ark. He's always been a very private guy. When he came here, he was only about 10 years old. We had just started the very big circus around the time that Russell took him in. 
These are really hard memories to bring up. Akko was so happy to have joined the circus. He was especially grateful to the ringmaster, and I'm sure he's grateful to you too. Huh? He's grateful to me too? Oh, shucks. You guys are exaggerating. He's fidgeting around so much, you can tell he's embarrassed. Well, let's give this Magatama a try, I guess. It's only two, so it might not be that bad, but we might not have all the evidence. Maybe I should have gone to Max to talk things over if they change. Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at that at this circus? Okay, okay, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there, some juicy burgers. Let's eat instead. Unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Uh, actually, I've kind of got an idea what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident. This one happened to be the case of a... This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident. Cause. Way to crush Maya's heart, Phoenix. <laughs> what about this? Looks tasty. What? You know, the burgers. Nope. Oh, hmm. So yeah, I don't think I have everything that I need to do this just yet. Hmm. Because I figured, like, we would say, unless maybe, uh, like, Acro was, like, who we needed to. Like, uh, pick at. Let's see. Anything new in here? Nope. The attorney's badge, obviously. What else causes accidents? Uh, probably mur maybe the monkey. Who knows? Well, first things first, since this is nearer, let's, yep. Maybe new things here. They must have taken Max in for questioning again. There really isn't anything that we need to ask him right now anyway. You're right, I guess. All right, let's go then. All right, that's not much. Then I guess let's go see if we can, like, see Acro again. Because... Hmm. So maybe we should, like... Try his? Hmm. Trying to think of many different things. Well, let's try Megatama you. See if we can find out yours. That would be the kind of twist. Surprise, the three is the thing you can do sooner. Let's see if we can do this one. I have to ask you, how are you injured? I'm sorry. I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes, unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it a secret. Acro, are you really telling me of that practice accident was your injury? What? What am I supposed to give to that? Tell me, if, do you mind if I ask a, you a question first? What do you want to know? Do you really think I could get an injury like this from something like that? I seem like I'm, I'm just trying to think. He's lying. Are you really telling me that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? I'm just trying to think. Maybe the note? Actually, I don't know what to give because the prompts that they're giving me don't make sense to what I would want to present to him anyway. Can't be the monkey, he's friends. Hmm. Maybe we need to, like, hunt down the monkey? First, maybe. 
All right, so maybe that's the first thing that we should do. We should go and see if we can ask Acro about the monkey stealing her outfit. Can we find the outfit? One's man treasure, another monkey's treasure. Ba -ba -ba. It's a picture of Regina. Well, she is a shining beauty. No objections here. Huh. Well, let's see, because I'm just trying to think, what could we pro like... <laughs> Money's a great friend to me. The top treasure. So cute. Hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to think. And I don't think we have, like... For Mo, the question is... This was the... Okay, for Mo, it was, like... This is the cause of the accident. I'm just trying to think. This is just wonky and I don't get it. I am just, I don't know, I do not know. This feels wonky and weird. Must have the cause of the tragedy or something, didn't he? Yeah, it was like... I'm just trying to think. Let's just go all everywhere, because maybe we... Hmm. I, I don't think anything would be in Moe's room. Okay, we'll check everywhere for anything anywhere, because there wasn't anything new in Acro's room. We'll quickly check, like, the big top areas again. Let's see. Anything around here. Does not look like it. Let's check the ringmaster's room. N nothing new. And I doubt it would be like, oh, fake mustache. That's just what I'm hooked on. There was nothing new in the cafeteria. Like maybe some... Only... Like maybe Moe's room? Okay, maybe Moe's room, apparently. Sure. Yeah, we know he's not here. What? What's that? I hear something. Stop, Nick. You're scaring me. Ah, uh, great. It's the monkey. Nick, it's money. The monkey's holding something. That's right. That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? All right. Time to take on this monkey attorney style. <laughs> Give it back, monkey brain. That means a lot to Regina. A real man wouldn't make a girl cry. Ah! <laughs> did I win? I tried to have a man-to-man -man talk with him. I really did. You know, man-to-man -man isn't really accurate. It was more like man-to-monkey. Nick, you, you... I swiped it while money was distracted. Wow, you're really <laughs> on the ball today, Nick. Like, the ultimate penalty if you can't talk to the monkey properly. Yeah, then he kills you. <laughs> Huh? You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe then you'll take... Uh, to, they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace and quiet. Hmm. What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Well, I guess it's time for you to lay off the burgers. Not to mention, it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. It's not Maya's size at all. What the fuck does that mean? If it's too small for her, then again, uh, Regina is 16, so maybe she had a bit of a growth spurt? Why didn't the monkey have any Cyclops? <laughs> that would have been hilarious. If <laughs> the monkey, give it back, monkey! Cyclops activate. It turns out, money was dating Leon. The, m the monkey is the killer, avenging his dear boyfriend. Maybe you know this. Nope. Well, let's go give it back, I guess. At least now we know that yeah, it was indeed a thing that I didn't have everything I needed. Here you go, Regina. Yay, thank you. You really got it back for me. Don't mention it. I love you, Mr. Attorney. Uh, it's nothing. I, you, 
Phoenix Wright is way too old for you. I'm sorry. Max is already pushing it. <laughs> no wonder you guys melt to mush in front of this girl. Hey, Regina, the costume was yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't seem to fit me. Huh? This costume? This isn't mine. It was Leon's. But Leon was a lion. How the hell would a lion be smaller than Maya? <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't put it past the series. <laughs> Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about. Oh, the one that somehow that someone killed. But again, how is that, like, smaller than Leon? He was killed, wasn't he? That's right, my dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down, and then he opened his mouth, you know. Gah! Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? I sure did. The people in the crowd always loved seeing me do it. They'd always start screaming. You sure they were screaming because they loved seeing you do that? Anyways. What was the bad thing? Oh, yeah. Leon bit someone during that practice. Regina! Everything was all right, though, right? No, it wasn't all right. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. And that's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. Animal shows the lion shot by Reg Shot! Oh! But again, how is that... How is a suit made for a lion smaller than Maya? I don't get that. I can't remember my beloved lion. Well, I guess that now we know at least one thing. We can slam down Moe's thing easily, probably. Oh. How dare you. I'll have to reread this. Because it didn't show up there, so I thought it wasn't going to work. You wouldn't know it, but I was responsible for naming all the animals at the circus. You named Money the Monkey and Regent Regina's Tiger? Guilty as charged! But Leon got his name from the Ringmaster. Really? He always said keep names simple and easy to associate. Nick's name is easy to associate, right, right? I always told Russell, if things what you think, then call him Lion the Lion. It's a great name, don't you think? Imagine if he could talk. I'm Lion! <laughs> lion. But that's when Russell said don't lie to yourself. That name is awful. <laughs> well, uh, let's smack down with the Megatama because we know it caused that accident. And it's only two locks, so it should be relatively easy. Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at this circus? Okay, okay, there's no need to look at me. It's so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there, some juicy burgers. Let's eat instead. Unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Uh, actually, I've kind of got an idea what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident. This wouldn't happen to be the cause of the accident, would it? We, do, we don't believe any of this, do we? Well, it depends on what the this is. Or maybe the what happened with the naming? Eh, who knows. I heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during a practice, right? How did you? I told them so many times. You shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting her head inside Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly the ringmaster went along. He never could say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo. Don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? Well, um, I promised I wouldn't say anything. You promised. He's involved in this, too. He's involved, huh? Mo must be talking about... Mo, if the person that you promised you wouldn't say anything... He is wearing something on his head, but... It was six months ago. It must have been Acro, right? <laughs> how? How do you know? Don't worry about that, Mo. 
Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. No, no way! I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Acro. <sighs> Unlock successful. I just needed to go to his room to find a monkey. It's just like you said, you know, the accident. Did someone die? No, but it would have probably been better if he had. What? How would that have been better? He's still alive, but when he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. Oh no. He'll never recover from the coma that he's in. Coma? All he does now is lie in his bed at the hospital. What? But... But, 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 Acro is in his room. Regina goes to his room. We talked to Acro. Franzika talked to Acro. What do you mean that he's in a coma? Massive brain damage. This is where Larry enters the game, isn't it? That would be on point. That's all he's ever going to be able to do. I see. How is he related to Acro? Oh, that makes sense. I thought we were talking about Acro was the one who was bitten, but okay. This makes sense. He's his brother. Huh? The person who got bit was Acro's brother. The brother? They were an acrobat team of brothers, Acro and Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. But anyway, they were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Um, who is Acro's younger brother? She, Sean Ding Ling. Because I know Ken Ling. Sean Ling? I don't get that one. But everyone always called him Bat. He fell in love with Regina. Trying to win her over was his downfall. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. Six months ago, while we were practicing, all of a sudden Bat blurts out, Let me perform with Leon! Why'd he do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. Oh, that's fucking brutal. I'll never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his... The pepper. The pepper. You don't mean to tell me that somebody set Bat up, did you? Is it the fucking puppet? Did the puppet actually engineer? Because it would make sense. Because the only one, like... If Sean was in love with Regina before Max even got there, I assume, then... But again, the pepper was in the box... Everything's so weird. Okay, I checked in uh, the Ace Attorney Wiki page. Doesn't have an explanation for Sean, only that Dingling sounds like Dangling. Like, yeah, Dangling, I guess. Uh, acrobats, yeah, on the trapeze. So I guess it kind of works. Kendling for the first guy, yeah. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. I, so I, I assume somebody, like, put pepper in Leon's nose and made him sneeze and subsequently basically kill Sean. He was smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bit down, he was smiling. Animals don't smile. So again, I think this, like goes further, because that does seem like a face you'd make when you're getting ready to sneeze. Some sick grin. No way! That's impossible! A smirking lion. Flying murderer. Why does it seem like it's always Mo who catches all these incredible events? Nick... Can Lion smile? Um, we never told the police about the incident. The circus would have been shut down if we had. The next day, the ringmaster took Leon out and shot him with a rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. But all this truthfulness has put me in a mood for a burger. 
Yeah, you'll go have some pepper. Shaka, shaka, shaka. And just like that, this case takes another turn for the weirdly depressing. Yeah. There he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. Uh, uh. Achoo! This, the game is totally setting up that Leon was set up. Nice! What a wonderful sneeze! Huh? You think so? You sneeze with pepper and slip on a banana peel! That's basic clownmanship! Girly, I know you goatee, remember that! Nick, I think I'd make a good clown! Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneezer. <laughs> does Regina sneeze with pepper too? She does! Bat would always tease her with pepper! The bat? From my point of view, those two always look so perfect together. They look perfect together, huh? What? Couldn't they perform an autopsy report on Bat's head or something? <laughs> Did Manfred update it? That's just it. They probably just said that Bat had a terrible training accident, but didn't, like, tell them that it was uh, Leon that did it, so he's just at the hospital and they probably hushed it up. But even then, there wouldn't be a need to do an autopsy on his head. Well, it, well I guess further, like, investigation on his head, because he's not dead. But it's just that... Ba -ba -ba. They hushed it up, and everybody saw it. So even if we did, it wouldn't make much difference. When you think about it, he really was a good guy. He truly liked Regina. He would try anything to give her attention. He seems like a good guy. Back then, that girl was always left. But I guess that everything backstage at the circus isn't always rosy. I see. It's harder than you think, making people laugh. Could this have been, like, cause for... Okay, because now we need to lay this out. Considering that Ben sa didn't say anything about whoever was dressed up like Max carrying a box. He didn't mention a box. Maybe the box was there already. And that's why it's like, I have definitive evidence of the murder that happened six months ago. Somebody set up Bat by putting Pepper on Leon's nose. But... Hmm... Could it have been... But we, we need to get to, down to what happened to Acro. To really understand. Ah, Mr. Wright. Back again, I see. Well, he did say I'll be back. Wait, was that someone else? I'll be back. We're back because Acro's hiding while his legs were injured. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It would seem that he knows that we know. Well, well. It seems you've got things you want to talk about so far away. Well, first things first, can we talk about your brother? Lately, I've been confined to this room, so I don't know the clue about the circus, so he... Well, first things first, we should save, just in case. And now, Magatama. Let's get down to business. To interrogate the cripple. I have to ask you, how are you injured? I'm sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes, unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it a secret. Acro, are you really telling me that a practice, injur uh, that a practice injury was the cause of your injury? Leon. Six months ago, you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. I know I'm on the right track. I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked by a lion. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. I'm no animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word for using. So let me rephrase that as battle the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to fight it to save something. Bat. 
It was a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got that terrible injury. Mo, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about Bat from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on his part. That's how I figured it out. A slip of the tongue. Anyways, they were an incredible team. Cut down together in their prime. Cut down together. That was where he slipped up, and that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same accident together, like always. My C. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. I still haven't broken Akra's last cyclone. This must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. Do you care to explain more? Akra, I know you're still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't seem to like much is the reason you're being invas evasive. Regina. You always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like she is cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You've got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know, her tiger tried to attack me. Regent tried to attack you. Twice. <laughs> it wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught to command a command to attack people. Regina isn't capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. What? What are you talking about? Oh, maybe I overdid it again. But if I can hand something over to Acro, maybe it'll... Here's proof that you had it out for Regina all along. This. Where'd you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Hmm, I guess I noticed it was around breakfast time. I always take Acro his breakfast in the morning. You wrote this. And then you put it in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. Huh. I didn't expect us to just have that resolved that quickly. My legs were injured by Leon six months ago. My younger brother, Bat, had a dare with Regina. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go to the movies with me on a date. That's insane! Didn't he know how dangerous that is? Uh, this I always struggle with timeline in AA cases. Yeah. <laughs> we all thought he was being stupid too. But that lion was very old to begin with. And age brought with it countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened? He just wanted to take her out. To the movies. Poor Bat. When Leon shot down, I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me, and that's how I ended up. What about Bat? He's still in a coma. I went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. Another day, another pedophilic love interest in Ace Attorney. Well, let's see how pedophilic. He's older than Max! Well, well, yeah. Why is everyone? Like, I figured, like, oh, maybe he's, uh, like, younger, younger. No. He's only four years younger. Meh. But I'm just trying to think because there's something about this, but why would he write the note to Regina to go there at the time that the murder happened? He looks younger. He definitely looks younger. And while you're having a weird conversation with an actor, bad, remember to stay hydrated.
So I'm just trying to think. What if there's a conspiracy here? Like, hmm. I'm just trying to think. He looks younger than his twin brother, in fact. Well, exactly. Unless you're talking about Acro looking younger than Bat. Personally, I think Bat looks younger than Acro. But there's something about this. The pepper in the box. The fact that the ringmaster went there and got killed. The fact that Max... Everything's so weird. I'm just trying to think. It's Bat who's mastered the baby face. But he's actually is younger. 22, 26. But he does seem a bit more baby face. Especially because they're only four years apart. This is weird. But I'm just trying to think. What if it's a conspiracy? What if it's a conspiracy and Regina... Acro and Bat are all working together on this. What if Bat woke up and Acro, in conjunction with Regina, like, put the notice there? And again, Regina basically led her father to the cafeteria. <laughs> I thought they were twins. Oops. Ah, that explains it. But, yeah, because it makes no sense, like... Either Regina is just that dumb, but, like, why would he proclaim it to be a murder? Well, maybe they'll answer that. Maybe they won't. But what if Bat woke up and he and his brother at least partially seek revenge, but... I don't think that, because it is noted that Bat would prank Regina with Pepper. I don't think that she is so cruel that she would be like, haha, I'm going to have Leon's uh, sneeze and bite your head off. Either Regina's just that evil, but then that would lead to... Like, again, it said it was murder, though. Well, I guess he is technically uh, in a coma, maybe even brain dead. But let's continue, and I'll give my thoughts overall after that. And that's the reason I keep going. Bat and Regina, they were such great friends. Oh, yeah. I wanted you to take a look at this. What is it? This is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross. It's covered in blood. This scarf. It was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. Hmm. When he did it, he looked like he was smiling. He? Leon, obviously. Oh! When he bit down on Bat's head, the expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick! I know, most of the same thing. What do you think it all means? I'll be taking that scar- uh, let me guess, is it, uh... Oh, but this isn't evidence. Miss Von Karma? I've already heard everything, so hand over the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial. That is for me to decide. I think we should begin our preparations now, Acro. Preparations? I've served a summons to Acro to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Acro will talk more at the prosecutor's office. Acro, a witness? Come, Acro, let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. And she took the scarf, too. What do we do, Nick? How are we going to handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Look at you full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. It's all beginning to come together now. All right. My... will save, and then I'll go over my thoughts. Okay. Somebody put pepper in Leon's nose, I would assume, to kill Bat. Or maybe 
to kill Regina. Why, I don't know. In fact, due to the fact that uh, the ringmaster got so heated at seeing it and actually went out to meet with the person who made the note who Acro purports himself to be, it's just odd. Because if he made that note and slipped it into Regina's pocket, or maybe that's just it, Acro knew that he couldn't put the note in a play in a proper place but he knew that Regina was gullible enough that she would be like oh I'm not a murderer I'll just put this up here like eventually it would get to who it needed to which is apparently him the ringmaster maybe the ringmaster didn't it's odd because the ringmaster is just purported to be such a loved individual a very loving individual he cares about everyone But it's just odd. Somebody put pepper on Leon's nose, causing him to sneeze and bite into Bat's head. And then, following that, the ringmaster shot Leon. I'm just trying to think of how it all goes together. There has to be revelations into the ringmaster at some point because again somebody did know that it was a setup because the pepper was in the box the box was there in the plaza when the ringmaster got there but that doesn't explain why presumably the ringmaster would go there dressed as maximilian wearing the hat and in the coat with the roses and then again, going off of my theory that it's a diddly d, what's it called, a, a crane in that under that tarp that everyone's like, oh, there's a murderer back there. Don't go looking. Because that's the, it's just too there, too big, too bulky, and too noticeable that I assume that it's some kind of crane or device that could have wires attached to it and then manipulate the wires and whatever they're attached to away. Of which, the bust of Maximilian would have been there but somebody else would have to be operating it so maybe bat is alive and awake and was operating the crane and wanted his revenge i don't know we've been going for two and a half hours so i don't feel confident in starting the next one because in the next section because even if the next section ends in one more like uh attorney thing or not attorney but like testimony section i feel like we're gonna go into a three-day investigations thing so we'll have to see and again there's just the weirdness of like i assume the ringmaster has a like removable mustache everything's weird but yes thank you very much for watching everybody this this is going in interesting places I really like this so far. Although I will admit the clown testimony was very weird and weirdly designed, but thanks to hints from chat, it wasn't terrible. Maybe they went beyond hints. Bad, eh, what are you gonna do? A square scarf? What prank is this? It's kind of like an ascot or like a... What is it? Uh, ba 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 I'm trying to think, but I can't think of the actual, like, uh, name of it. Do you want me to estimate the time? I'd probably, uh... Uh, yeah, I'd probably save best to save for next time. That's what I was going to do. Yeah. But, yeah, th things are really going interesting and coming together. But the real question is, first, who is the murderer in the situation of Leon sneezing and biting Bat? Either it's Trilo, who wanted to eliminate uh, Bat so that he could get closer to Regina... Or it was the ringmaster for some reason. And then again, there's the weird bit where the ringmaster went out dressed as Maximilian. And then apparently the bust of Maximilian was then dressed in his cloak, at least. And flown away. There has to be a big missing piece here. 
But yes, thank you very much. Uh, my estimate's an hour, then I will definitely wait for next time, and uh, next time we'll do a bit of the next case, presumably the last case of Justice for All. Well, after we finish up the big top. But yes, again, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. The edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings. Uh, I swear, content is coming at some point. And then the streaming YouTube channel, Neon Icy Games, where I both stream to YouTube as well as upload all the various streams of the past. And then, of course, if you want to watch me live on Twitch.tv, I have a Twitch there at Neon Icy Wings. So if you want to watch on YouTube, you can at Neon Icy Games. Or if you want, prefer Twitch, you can watch on Neon Icy Wings. And then if you want more like little art things like my avatar in the corner, you can see me on the various art sites of DeviantArt, Newgrounds, uh, Tumblr, Inkblot, so many different places, Twitter. And they're all linked in my link tree, which is link tr.ee slash neon icy wings and can be found in all the bio and link places of the world uh yeah you'll love the next case well i'm happy to hear that i'm just glad that i'm liking turn about big top so much when it's apparently much maligned by people but yes thank you very much for everybody being here watching me play this game and i hope to see you dudes next time bye bye <laughs>